Good morning everyone and welcome to our service this morning. And no matter what week you've had um, this week, we um, hope and pray that this is a space where you can bring your worship to the Lord, that you can um, come and hear from him um, and, and be blessed and find community even though it be it's online. Um, and boys and girls, I missed Zoom this morning. Um, but during the week, um, I had been chatting to Ryan about what he was going to share with you guys. Um, so I know there was a wee, a wee phrase that you guys talked about. And I don't know if any of you guys watch Catch Phrase with your mum and dad. In our house, it's a big hit on a Saturday night if it's on. All four of us, even the youngest, Daniel, he is shouting at the screen um, trying to guess what the catchphrase is. So I thought we would do one this morning. And this is a wee live catchphrase. And parents, if you can get it, shout it out at the screen. Kids, don't let on if you think you know. Okay. So it's very simple. Okay. That's what we got. Here it is. That's it. Is anybody shouting at the screen? If you are and you're shouting turning over a new leaf then you've got it and I'm afraid there's no cash prize this morning but there is a good old pat on the back if you got that right and we were talking about that phrase turning over a new leaf in um, the story of Zacchaeus and how Zacchaeus um, a man who had made bad choices maybe um, was was um, cheating people out of money um, wasn't really well liked in his community. How he climbed the tree um, to see Jesus, to hear Jesus. And Jesus came to him and said, I'm going to your house for tea. And we see how Zacchaeus completely turned over a new leaf that day. And that's the power of Jesus in our lives. And you know, it got me thinking about turning over a new leaf, how Zacchaeus climbed the tree, all the different ways that trees are used in the Bible um, to help us learn more about what it is to be a Christian. First of all, right back at the start, you've got the trees in the Garden of Eden um, as well. You've got the tree of life at the end of the Bible uh, and that's um, in, in Revelation. You've also got um, in the Psalms, it talks about us being oaks of righteousness and how our roots need to go down deep. Uh, we, there's also the great passage in John 15 that talks about abiding in Christ, about us being the branches um, that are in the vine. And it also talks in Romans about us being grafted in um, to the promises that um, Jesus gave or God gave his people. Um, and there's loads in the Bible about bearing good fruit. And bearing good fruit, um, it made me straight away think of the fruits of the Spirit. And we can only bear good fruit if we are connected to Jesus, if we are connected to the true vine. I wonder in your life, boys and girls, as we look at our wee craft today and our activity pack, I wonder, is there things, um, as we as we talk to Jesus, is there things that he's telling us that we maybe need to turn over a new leaf? And that continues right throughout life, boys and girls. There's always room to become more like Jesus, to have more good fruit in our lives. Um, I've got a few here that um, I've done during the week. And these are our wee leaves. And maybe... Maybe it's really simple things actually, like being mean to our brothers and sisters. We're spending them an awful lot of time at home. And actually, maybe we can turn over a new leaf and show the fruit of the spirit of kindness. So maybe that's one. Or, I'm afraid this one is definitely me. Maybe it's being impatient. Um... And actually, uh, what God asks of us with the fruit of the Spirit, if we are in him, that he will help us to be patient. Or maybe this last one. Maybe we're really struggling at the minute with feelings of anger or being angry. And actually, what, what Jesus promises us with, um, as we walk with him and as we, as we learn from him, that part of the fruit of the Spirit is self-control. Uh, and I love that wee idea of actually, let's think about today. Let's ask God, um, 
how do I need to change? Where is there is there parts of, of me that I could turn over a new leaf? And now we're we're gonna listen to um, we're gonna sing a song together, um, and it's one you guys did for our children's day service back in June, and it's the we, we are more than conquerors, um, and it talks about we will not bow to sin or to shame that we are defiant in His name, and um, no matter what boys and girls you're struggling with, mums and dads, adults, no matter what things we want to change, that we can do it through Jesus, because we are more than conquerors. Oh, you're it. 
Good morning and welcome to our worship this morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you also to Donna for that great introduction on turning over a new leaf, an important message for all of us there. And to the JL team for leading us in We Are More Than Conquerors. Some announcements to begin with and a big one for this evening. We're starting the Alpha course at eight o'clock online. And so if you want to know more about faith, know more about Jesus, the Alpha course is the place to find out more. And we'd love you to join. So the details are on screen and please contact us and we'll get you into a, an Alpha group. It, it would be a real joy. Uh, to have you join uh, those groups this evening, eight o'clock, the first week of the Alpha course. And then we're excited to have our second prayer meeting of 2021 this Wednesday at half past seven. Uh, so please join us for that. Uh, tremendously looking forward to it. And, and we'd love to have more people joining and uh, and praying together. And then in a fortnight's time uh, on Wednesday evening, we won't have prayer meeting. We're going to have a very special open house. And uh, the speaker is the Archdeacon of Belfast, uh, Archdeacon Barry Ford. And he's going to speak on the theme of content no matter what. Uh, please watch out for details for that for the 10th of February and you'd be most welcome to again join that online evening. Next Sunday, the register for the general vestry persons will open. And uh, that means if you've never registered before and you'd like to vote at our annual vestry around Easter, um, well then uh, you need to be on that register. Uh, so please watch out for the details online uh, and on the website uh, and get in contact if you've any problems with registration. If you've registered before, you don't need to do so again. On the last Sunday in January, at half past three, the cathedral is usually the host for the leprosy mission annual service. And that service isn't going to be in the cathedral this year, um, but it will be online. So half past three this afternoon, go to tlm-ni.org and you'll be able to join their annual service. Um, and there's also details of how you can support their mission uh, to eradicate leprosy throughout the world. Special thanks to our lay reader, um, Dennis Fullerton, who's preaching today and to his wife, Margaret, for reading for us. We're going to begin with a great sentence of scripture from 1 Timothy 2 and verse 1. I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people. Ask God to help them intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. Let's pray. Father Almighty, your glory is spoken throughout creation. Lord Jesus Christ, you came to proclaim good news and lay down your life for us. Holy Spirit, you are the fount of all wisdom, knowledge and understanding. We offer praise and worship to you from our hearts. And now knowing that we fall short of God's glory, so we turn to the Lord to renew our faith in his promises by confessing our sins in penitence. So we say together, O oh God, our loving Father in heaven, we confess that we have sinned against you. We have broken your commandments. We have often been selfish. We have not loved you as we should. For these and all our sins, forgive us, we pray. Through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. May the God of love bring us back to himself 
forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This morning we will hear from Mark chapter 1, the story of Jesus healing a man from leprosy. And so our special prayer for this Sunday is the leprosy mission prayer. Let's pray. Almighty Father, the giver of life and health, look mercifully on those who suffer from leprosy. Stretch out your hand to touch and heal them, as Jesus did during his earthly life. Give wisdom and insight to those who are seeking the prevention and cure of the disease. Give skill and sympathy to those who minister to the patients. Reunite the separated with their family and friends and inspire your people with the task set before the leprosy mission, that it may never lack the staff or the means to carry on its healing work in accordance with your will and to the glory of your holy name. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. And now we're going to all join together in singing a great hymn, Behold Our God. Yeah. 
The Bible reading this morning is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, beginning at verse 35. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him, and when they found him they exclaimed, Everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, Let us go somewhere else, to the nearby villages, so that I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he travelled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. A man with leprosy came to him and begged him on his knees, If you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus, filled with compassion, reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said. Be clean. Immediately the leprosy left him and he was cleansed. Jesus sent him away at once with a strong warning. See that you don't tell this to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Instead he went out and he began to talk freely, spreading the news. As a result, Jesus could no longer enter a town openly, but stayed outside in lonely places. Yet the people still came to him from everywhere. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. We often hear it said, nobody's perfect. As a fact, of course. And it applies to every aspect of our lives, our health, our abilities, how we perform our work, our behaviour, our morality and our appearance. I reckon few of us would claim to rival the models on the catwalk. Sadly, our appearance can be radically changed by accident and disease, and it's very hard, if, it, if not impossible, to restore a disfigured face to how it looked before. <clears throat> I wonder how you react to seeing uh, someone whose face has been badly disfigured. In the ancient world, in the world of the Bible, people had the same range of skin diseases that we have uh, today. The term leprosy was applied to all of them. All skin disorders were considered contagious and every society enforced social isolation on those who had them. Having to isolate, of course, is something we are quite familiar with today. People with a skin condition were not welcome among the clean population, for they were considered unclean, and the law of Moses pronounced them unclean. <clears throat> People with leprosy were made to feel ashamed, although it was by no fault of their own. The man we heard about in our reading, and all like him, could take no part in any religious or social activity with normal people. If a member of the public was in contact with an unclean person, they also became unclean. We actually hear that some people were so heartless that they threw stones at people with leprosy to make them keep their distance. Actually, the disease we call leprosy is not particularly contagious. People still get it in tropical and subtropical countries. Leprosy kills the nerves to the, at the extremities of our bodies, the fingers, the toes, uh, the nose, uh, and they can get damaged and infected and eventually drop off. And hands, feet and legs can all suffer in the same way. The good news is that leprosy is entirely curable with antibiotics. Many have been cured and many have not. Today is Leprosy Sunday and in normal times the cathedral would host the annual service of the leprosy mission in the cathedral this afternoon. <clears throat> Today we're looking at St Mark's record of Jesus healing a, a, of a man with leprosy. We'll look at it in three parts. Coming, cleansing and commanding. First the coming. In verse 40, we read, A man with leprosy came to him and begged him on his knees, If you are willing, you can make me clean. 
think back to what we said about people with uh, <clears throat> people being uh, outcasts and forced to stay away from the rest of society if they had leprosy. Yet this man dared to come right up to Jesus, a member of the clean population. Maybe Jesus was outside a town or village and maybe only had his disciples around him. The man does seem to be chancing his arm, as we say. We have to conclude that the man believed that Jesus would not be harsh and drive him away. For Jesus quickly became known as someone who had time and a welcome for everyone. The Gospels are full of stories of Jesus bringing hope and healing to people on the margins of society. This man knew that he could come to Jesus and not be humiliated. On another occasion, Jesus said, whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. And we should remember that he welcomes all who come like this man on their knees. This man also knew that he was coming to one who was able to heal him. He believed that Jesus had the power, the power of God to do that. It's important to notice that St. Matthew and St. Luke and their accounts of the healing of this man tell us that the man began to speak by addressing Jesus as Lord. Lord, if you're willing. This man knew that he was in the presence of a man filled with divine power and compassion. And in the presence of the divine, he humbly fell on his knees and made his request without presuming on Jesus. He came humbly, recognising who Jesus is just as we have to do. And he came clearly also in faith that Jesus could heal him. Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean, he said. He's unlike some whose faith is weak. His faith is total. Lord, you can. And we need to also to have faith like that when we come to the Lord with our requests. On another occasion, Jesus said, whatever you ask in prayer, believe you've received it and it will be yours. We may well not see our request answered at once. The timing is in God's hands and we need to make sure that we're asking in line with God's will too. We need to be coming to Jesus all the time. Coming to Jesus should be as natural as eating and sleeping. It's part of being a disciple of Jesus. He has become our friend after all, as well as our saviour. We've come onto his team, as it were. He calls us to live like him and work for him. And just as Jesus calls his, disciple, his disciples to be with him, so we need to be with him every day. To maintain and deepen our relationship and to listen and to learn, to seek his forgiveness <clears throat> to receive his cleansing from our sin. We come to be encouraged, strengthened in our faith and equipped to serve him, to bring the light of Jesus to dark places around us. So I ask you today, are you coming? We may have a particular need. <clears throat> we should come like this man to ask for deliverance or a solution to our problems. It may be because of illness. There might be problems in our family or at work. You could have anxieties and fears. And it's good to ask other Christians to seek God's help for you and with you. <clears throat> we may not be meeting in the cathedral right now, but our prayer ministry team and others <clears throat> are still praying for people who make their need known. Get in touch with Sam or Danielle or anyone you know who pray with you. Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Come to me, come to him. This man came. Let's come to Jesus and see what wonderful things he'll do for us. Now let's look at his cleansing. This man with leprosy had come humbly and in faith to Jesus and made his request. And Jesus at once reached out his hand to touch the man, saying, I am willing, be clean. And the man was cleansed of his leprosy in an instant. 
that touch by Jesus probably was the first loving touch the man had had in years. <clears throat> but Jesus had just done what was unthinkable for anyone else but him to do. People believed that touching a person with leprosy could give you the disease. And as we said, it was against the Jewish law. For by touching an unclean person, you too became unclean. And like this man, you were forbidden to interact with the other with other people around you until you performed the prescribed rituals for cleansing. Mark tells us why Jesus touched the man. He says, filled with compassion, he reached out his hand. And that touch banished the disease and he was cleansed as well. Leprosy was considered a, a dirty disease. It defiled you. It made you unclean. This man needed to be made clean and to know it. Jesus did for him what he needed. All traces of leprosy left him. Flaking skin, sores, whatever it was that you could see. Jesus cleansed him. The appearance of the disease was gone. The stigma of it was gone. The need to stay apart from ordinary people was gone. All that was gone. All that was gone. He was cleansed. And it was first of all because Jesus cared deeply for this man, as he did for all. He had compassion on him. And he had <clears throat> divine power upon him to root out the disease within. The disease which showed itself on the skin. In chapter 5, Mark says, And the power of the Lord was with Jesus to heal all who were ill. Now we know that the real value of a person is inside, not on the outside. A person's body may be disfigured but and disease, but of course the person inside is no less valuable to us or to God. No one is beyond God's reach and touch. In a sense, we're all people with leprosy because we've all been disfigured by the ugliness of sin. Paul sums it up in Romans chapter 3 in well-known words. All have sinned and fallen short of God's glory, God's high standard. God's word clearly teaches us again and again that our sin, that is our selfish, wayward nature, makes us break God's law and makes us hurt each other. We think wrongly, we speak wrongly, and that sin forms a great barrier between us and God. And indeed between us and other people. We just cannot remove that barrier or cross it by ourselves. For the best we can do will always fall short of God's 100% standard. But God has reached out to us in his son Jesus to rescue and save us from the impurity and the uncleanness of our sin and from all its terrible consequences. God in uh, Jesus Christ has reached down into our world through him to provide cleansing from our sin. Jesus took all our sins on himself and as he hung on the cross and took also the only just penalty for our sins, which is death or separation from God. He had no sin of his own, and so he could suffer and die for yours and mine. All God asks us to do is receive his gift of forgiveness and cleansing. It's ours for the asking. Let's hear how Paul put it uh, this way in Romans. It's part of a longer passage and we would do well to look it up uh, and think about what Paul is saying. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement or cleansing and reconciliation through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. And you know what St John wrote in well-known words too. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. 
there could be someone listening or watching today and you have not yet received this great salvation from Jesus. You've not let, yet let Jesus cleanse you from your sin. To keep Jesus out of your life is to say no to God's gift of eternal life. To keep Jesus out is to bear, choose to bear the full weight of God's judgment of your sin by yourself. And that's a prospect that doesn't bear thinking about. No one chooses hell instead of heaven. But to refuse the cleansing of your sin through Jesus is to do just that. Jesus promises to give all who come to him life to the full. Other versions, older versions, abundant life. Choose life. Ask someone to help you if, if you need to. To come to Jesus and receive that life. Receive this cleansing from your sin. Now let's look at the end of the story. <clears throat> it's about commanding. Jesus told the man to do two things. He gave him two commands. The first one was a positive. Uh, oh, sorry, we're going to take the second one first, which is a positive. Go and show yourself your now clean self to a priest and offer the sacrifices that the law prescribes for someone cleansed from leprosy. By doing this, the man would show his gratitude to God for his healing. And the priest would declare him clean. And so his healing would become official and he could be received back into normal society. The other command that Jesus gave him was a negative. Don't talk to anyone about your cleansing. Now that was a big ask. And we read that the man wasn't up to it and he told everyone. It's the most natural thing in the world to tell your good news to people, isn't it? Jesus had a good reason to ask the man not to tell everyone. Already people were flocking to him, asking for healing or expecting to see Jesus perform miracles. Another report of healing was going to attract even more crowds. But Jesus saw his primary role as that of a healer. Sorry, he saw his primary role as that, not that of a healer. Much more important for him was to teach to teach the importance of repentance from sin and living out a faith-filled and godly life. Many in the crowds had no interest in being changed and Jesus knew that. He talked about them when he told the parable of the sower. They were like the hardened path in that parable. And whatever <clears throat> uh, Jesus might say would just be like the seed that was picked up by the birds would be wasted. Something Jesus said just before he healed this man is very instructive. He had just uh, carried out or performed many miracles, healed many people in Capernaum and we're told that he went away that night or sorry went night, early the next morning to pray and Peter missed him and went looking for him. And do you remember what Peter said in our reading? Everyone is looking for you. And how did Jesus answer? He said, Let's go somewhere else to the nearby villages so that I can preach there also. That's why I have come. His primary role was to preach and teach. And I want to end our, our thoughts this morning by mentioning three clear commands uh, that Jesus gives his followers. Commands that are repeated and emphasised by the apostles and the letter writers of the New Testament. And the first one follows on uh, closely from Jesus' emphasis on teaching. That one is his command to listen to what he says. And put it another way, it's read and learn what God says in his word. That's the foundation of a Christian life. We can't leave it out or poorly practice reading the word and hearing God's voice through it or our Christian faith will be pretty weak. The second command follows on from the first. Do what Jesus says. This now cleansed man was disobedient 
and the result was that Jesus could no longer enter a town openly uh, or else he would have been surrounded by crowds. The man's disobedience hindered Jesus' work. We need to know how Jesus and the apostles tell us how to live and put that into practice. That way our lives will be a good advertisement for Jesus and the gospel. People quickly notice poor behaviour in Christians, don't they? Uh, and you look, they may well say, and you may have heard it, well, if that's what a Christian is like, I don't want to be part of that. But if we live good and upright and godly lives, equally, people will notice and they're made, they are much more likely to listen to Christians talking about Jesus or even ask to be told more. At the end of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, Everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. He then said, To hear God's voice, God's word, and not put it into practice is foolish and like someone building their house on sand. And that person's relationship with Jesus was obviously weak, and they themselves, he said, faced disaster. So listen to what Jesus says. Do it. Put it into practice. And the third command. Jesus may have told this man to keep quiet, but there was a good reason for that, as we have seen. After delivering another man from many, many demons, and the man wanted to accompany him away from his home area, Jesus told him, Go home to your family and tell them how much the Lord has done for you. To us, he says, talk about me and the new eternal life that I give you, I've given you. Talk to your family, your friends, your neighbours, your school and workmates. Tell them about me. He said to his disciples at the end, as the Father has sent me, so am I sending you. And go and make disciples. Go and teach people how to become Christians. Tell them about me. This man, Jesus, told him to keep quiet, and yet he told everybody. Jesus commands uh, us to tell everyone, and how often we keep quiet about him. When we tell anyone what Jesus has done for us, they nor anyone else uh, can deny what he has done for us. Let's tell them about it. There are numerous people around us in need of rescue, in need of God's help. God's calling you and me every day to go and tell them how much he has done for us and what he can do for them. Are we up for it? So then, come to Jesus. Let him meet your need. Let Jesus cleanse you from your sin and give you fullness of life. Heed his commands. In love he won for us our salvation. And he says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And surely it's not a chore to serve the one we love. Amen. Yo 
Thank you so much to Dennis for opening God's word with us this morning. We're going to spend a little bit of time now together as a church family in prayer. And after the words, Lord, in your mercy, the response is hear our prayer. So let us pray. Father, we praise you because you are the king who reigns forever in faithfulness. You're the almighty creator and the one who sustains us in our weakness. So we come to you now, Lord, trusting that you hear and answer our prayers. We continue to pray for our leaders, for those in authority over us in this time of crisis, that they would make just and wise decisions. Lord, may they come to recognise that their authority comes from you ultimately, and may they seek to govern in a way that reflects your character and not just their political agendas. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for Jesus who initiated the coming of your kingdom on earth. Thank you for his ministry and for his care of the needy. Thank you that Jesus showed us that you are the God who upholds the oppressed. Help us as your instruments to live out the values of your kingdom as we care for the vulnerable and the oppressed in our community. In a moment of silence, we lift in prayer those we know of who feel particularly vulnerable at this time. We continue to pray for those suffering from COVID-19 and those who have been bereaved by the virus. Lord, we ask that the vaccination programme would be successful in bringing an end to this virus and pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Lord, on this World Leprosy Sunday, we pray for all who are affected by this awful disease. Father, we are sorry for the times when we are blind and deaf to the suffering of others across the world. As we heard the story of how Jesus healed a man with leprosy, so we pray that you would continue to reach out, heal and restore those with leprosy. We pray that you continue to work through agencies like the Leprosy Mission to bring hope and the good news of Jesus, as well as physical healing to so many. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our children and young people as they face even more time away from school. We pray especially for their mental health at this time. Lord, we thank you for Donna, Ryan, Laura and their teams in Kidzone and Metal as they continue to reach out and engage with the youngest members of our family. Lord, would you bless their homes, parents and families at this time. We pray for Metal this weekend as many of them rise to the challenge of a sponsored blackout for Open Doors. Thank you for how they have responded to the stories of persecuted Christians around the world. Lord, would you deepen their faith as they take on this challenge? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we continue to trust you in these times. We don't know what the next few weeks and months will bring for our church community. But we thank you that you're sovereign over us. That you've promised to build your church. Lord, we trust you even in a global pandemic. 
And we know that even a pandemic will not overcome your kingdom. So Lord, would you strengthen that trust in each of us? Let this time of difficulty not be a discouragement, but a refiner's fire that brings pure gold out of each of us. Lord, would you protect and strengthen each member of our church family? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we conclude our time of prayer together by praying the family prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And just before our blessing and our final song, just a reminder to you that we are beginning Alpha tonight. So if you haven't got the Zoom details and you'd like to join us, please get in touch with me this afternoon and I'll get those to you. We would love you to join us for that. And then just to remind you again about the prayer meeting this week. And so we close with this final prayer and blessing. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen. So we hand back over to our worship team as we finish this morning service with In Christ Alone.